Welcome back to this is lecture number five. I have lost count. Uh, good afternoon. Um, today we are going to talk about syntax. Uh, I remember the first class I took. I mentioned these big names, you know, these words: phonetics, morphology, and then there is a turn of syntax. Uh, on the board, I, I'll be using some things like board, PPT, um, the projector, but syntax. I have to define the word syntax first. Now, in this journey of language, of course, linguistically speaking, languages are words. Before they are words, they are sounds, of course, phonetics, phonology. Then they are words. In the previous class, you've learned how word formation works, huh? how words are formed, uh, divided into different parts of speech, which was the territory of morphology, morphological analysis. Now we go to beyond the word, you have phrases, you have clauses, you have sentences, right? So today's lecture will be about, in a any language that we do, linguistics deals with analyzing sentences. Um, what is a sentence? And somehow the, the sounds sentence and syntax will have a correlation. So linguists study the word order within a sentence. Now, a sentence is made up of units beyond the words. So of course it is made up of words, but when words combine together, um, two words, three words become phrases, then, by the way, what is the difference between a phrase and a clause uh, and a sentence? Sentence is a complete construction. Phrase is, of course, made up of a few words, but all of you know that all languages have subject and verb constructions. Subject, of course, it will be occupied by nouns. Now, those units, those parts of sentences, which will have subject, um, verb, unit, or construction, we call them clauses. We do not call phrases as subject, verb, constructions. So, for example, if you say, in the end, this is this, these are three words, we can call them a phrase, and phrases can be many types, noun phrase, verb phrase. Today we'll do a, a list of phrases. So uh, the first thing is to talk of syntax. Before I do that, I want to talk about not just English language, but all languages will have a word order. Um, since we are going to talk about words after morphology, which means uh, words are formed, now words are ready to combine with other words. But you just cannot do it blindly, accidentally. You have to place one word in front or after another word or at, at the front of, a, of one word based upon a certain, certain understanding. Now, when you combine words in a meaningful manner, your sentence becomes a linguistic, grammatical word form or a construction which has a meaning. All languages have a word order but they may not have the same word order. English, and this, this comes from my first class. You know, I, the example we took with the word dog, which was on the level of phonetics, just sounds on the level of word. You change the form of the words on the level of morphology. Then you use the word dog a, within a sentence, and you get um, the position of the word dog. And similarly, position of every single word within a sentence will be important. Positions will be important. Uh, in English, these positions are already decided as, well, understood as, subject is followed by a verb, is followed by an object. The, uh, the word order will be SVO in English. But this doesn't mean that this will happen in other languages as well. Well, I just want to not talk about word order. But as far as the languages of the world are concerned, you have uh, this, this is one set of data. Uh, many of the languages, mostly Indo-European languages, have SVO structure. 42% of these languages, English, Indonesian, Punjabi, Hindi, uh, etc. Then you have uh, this word order, which Teng Yong translated the, word, the sentence having the word dog in the first class. And we all noticed how Tibetan has the verb in the final position, not in the medial, middle wala nahi, but in the final it shifts. So SVO, uh, sorry, SOV is another 
uh, order word order which we find found in which we find in Japanese Turkish uh, Sino Tibetan languages etc then you have other languages having different word orders you won't believe that some languages have v verb at the very beginning Arabic Arabic one of the oldest and one of the famous languages of the world has verb at the beginning so if you r try to write an Arabic sentence in English you would have to use the word for example eight the verb is eight right at the beginning eight she bread uh, in in Arabic no sorry eight bread she something like that uh, if you follow verb object subject now these languages are less now why am I talking about word orders is that the position of words will change according to according to different languages uh, in some languages verb object bonding takes place in other languages uh, you know other other correlations take place this is simple data I'm just at the beginning introduction I'm just sharing with you uh, also sharing because at the end of the class towards the end of the lecture I will come back to this word order now enough of it let us begin with the word syntax <coughs> what is syntax so we have already talked about the need to go beyond how words are formed words now words combine the big question is how do they combine and where do we place them if you have a noun what is the position same verb and when you look at noun you cannot use just one noun in order to convey something with the noun you will add maybe a determiner maybe an adjective for example the tall boy so this becomes a noun phrase instead of just being a noun what is the noun in the in the sentence uh, in the phrase the tall boy what is the noun here boy and in order to use in order to use the word boy I will have to I mean also uh, give other qualities of the boy uh, and in order to use the adjective we will also need a determiner the article at the beginning the positions of of these words will be important so syntax is in linguistic terms syntax is the capacity human capacity to create sentences again human this is a special thing we human beings have that with limited sounds and limited words alphabets we we can generate the word generate will be very important in grammar um, and there is a whole branch of grammar called generative grammar we will maybe touch touch that a little bit later but syntax is basically I mean let it be very clear in your mind the creative capacity of human beings to generate infinite sentences you know with with those words you can create as many sentences as possible this is why you have books after books keep coming to the market with new formations and you sometimes you have long sentences of more than a page construction you know there are novels in which some authors even challenged the readers by writing and making them read this tedious long sentence of three pages length and but that is only possible if we begin with uh, if we begin with looking at phrases noun phrases verb phrases so just reading th this uh, definition uh, we build sentences human beings build sentences because I mean right now I'm building sentences you're listening to sentences you have e always been doing it always ever since you were conscious you had this inner innate sort of you know you had this subconscious capacity to combine words and you made sense to your parents to your friends then to the teachers so we are already doing something we are not learning something we will be doing so syntax is already inside us the, the capacity to combine words but we today are trying to understand how do we combine them I mean we are trying to analyze syntax ka formation how does it take place linguists so we have a certain set of rules in our subconscious mind we already know these rules that in English noun will come at the first position followed by a verb etc now linguists are very interested uh, whether you're doing Tibetan language or any language linguistics call linguists call this these rules syntax 
Now, the moment I use the word syntax, we will also be using other words like classes, word classes. Today, there is no talk of words. Word classes, then grammatical categories. Also, parts of speech. All these phrases I'm using are the business of, the domain of syntax. So syntax does two things. One, it studies human creative power to generate, produce infinite sentences, as many sentences. Also, linguists try to, syntax tries to un understand this capacity to build as many sentences as, as you can. Now, before we go into any sentence, today there will be many sentences I, I bring to you, and we'll try to understand the combination of the words. Many sentences, but before we do that, let's, let's understand that the first scholar, and this is Western knowledge, by the way, the f it is considered that the first scholar who looked at sentences as phrases, as combination of words, as syntactic constructions, uh, some Sanskrit scholar in 500 BC, Yasaka, Yasaka uh, would be the pronunciation. He was the first person to recognize. Uske baad came Plato, Aristotle, and others who also looked into this uh, syntactic construction of sentences. So he recognized that words can be divided into groups. What we are calling phrases, or we are calling parts of speech, or we are calling, um, or we are calling, uh, you know, um, units, units of phrases, clauses. So words can be divided into groups, which are also called word classes, abhi mene bola, and these can also be called grammatical categories. So today is your chance to, to revise your grammar stuff as well. We put together words to make large number of meanings. But all these words and all these combinations must be different from each other. Only then communication takes place. Otherwise, you will be repeating the same sentence day in, day out. So this, again, putting together of words, uh, ye second class, mein, I think, with, with uh, Dr. Mahesh, you did a quality of human language, which we call duality, duality of patterning. That, that capacity we call combining words and generate meanings. But we will begin with looking at sentences. First of all, we look at some kya, grammatical categories, parts of speech, and syntactic general word classes Le well these are the word classes let us all for for the sake of revision of our high school grammar a little bit look at nouns to begin with now the moment i say nouns i'm dealing with single words single words are understood morphologically how do we how do we make nouns and in english language you have nouns any word with which you can attach a suffix s can be called nouns. By the way, verbs also have attachments as s, but right now only talking of nouns. For example, angel can be changed into angels. It is a noun. So this plural suffix, plural suffix s, morphologically speaking, speaking, if it if it can change angel into a plural, we have to be sure that then we can be sure that the word angel is a noun. Similarly, cola, cola's action, actions. And all those words with which we cannot add this plural suffix cannot be nouns. I mean, even if we try terribly or uh, uh, we cannot make plural of terribly. We cannot make a plural of some. And in linguistics, if you, if you put this asterisk, this star, it, it shows that there is a mistake. So you see, you will see in other slides as well. Now, nouns can can also be understood within a phrase, within a sentence. When we distribute, when we distribute within a sentence, some word ahead of some other word, and then it makes sense. Nouns can fit between, in English language, nouns commonly fit between a verb and a determiner. Between the, uh, for example, the angel is great, the, the strength is great. All these words are nouns. N what are nouns? Name of person, place, or thing. Kindly add one more thing to this. Person, place, thing, and ideas, concepts. So strength here is, is not a name of a thing. Strength is an idea. Now, other words which cannot fit between this formula, between the determiner, determiners, uh, the articles, the words which determine the noun to come. 
determine whether it's definite, whether it's indefinite, those are the determiners. To determine, to decide, huh? so the decides what are we talking of? I mean, are we talking of a specific noun or a general indefinite for which we will use the word a or an? So, th which are also determiners. Now, now non-nouns cannot fix between a determiner and a verb. In this frame, the dash is great. You cannot say the tall is great. You cannot say tall is the adjective. You cannot say uh, the that is great. Now, nouns can also be understood as uh, meaning-based formations. A noun is a person, place, thing. The following words can also be, I have already spoken about it, concepts or ideas like depth, gender, defeat, uh, which are ideas and concepts. So nouns within a sentence are understood as distribution, understood as meaning, and understood as uh, you know, changes of words with changes to the suffixes. Let's, let's also recognize our verbs. Now, morphologically speaking, words which can have ed suffix and form into a new, I mean, these are past tense suffixes. So if you can change demonstrate into demonstrated, then it is a, it is a verb. Laugh into laughed, it's a verb. But the words you cannot change, for example, that, cannot be said as thated or summed or third. Now, these are, uh, these are not verbs, morphologically speaking. I mean, morphologically, the word that does not allow the, the plural, uh, the past tense suffix, ed, to be added. As far as distribu distribution means the position of the, of the uh, unit of the sentence. Where is it? In English, because it comes after the subject, only verbs come after a noun to form a sentence. Verbs can, so again, you have a frame. Verbs can form a sentence with a noun before it. So for example, in this sentence, the word is you. You is a noun. The word you is, is it a noun? It's a pronoun, but pronoun is a, pronouns are also nouns in place of nouns, of course. So you, and if a word can come here with that ed construction, if a verb can come here, then it's a, it's a meaningful phrase. You delivered, you, sigh, you sighed, you laughed. And similarly, other words which cannot be distributed at this position are not verbs. Simple knowledge, we are just revising our, our um, parts of speech in a different way. Now, verbs can be other categories of verbs, subcategories of verbs, some students understand. Transitive verbs, intransitive verbs, dry, dry transitive verbs. Now, some verbs require two nouns in certain sentences after the verb. And we are not only looking at words, we are looking at phrases. So for example, you have, a you have a phrase like Alice gave the, first of all, Alice gave. Is this a valid construction? Can we call it a phrase? We cannot. Because we cannot call it a ditransitive verb because it needs another noun who receives that. Alice gave what? Alice gave something. Then another noun, a second noun, to whom? and gave what? So Alice gave the book. This is OK. Alice gave Mary the book. Now, these kind of verbs are ditransitive verbs, which require more nouns after that. I mean, where the action verb, action word, is bringing out its action and giving it to an object after it. Transitive verbs um, require one noun after. So for example, I mean, just one noun. Alice admires courage. Uh, so the noun, the subject, followed by a verb, is followed by another noun who will receive uh, the action. Alice admires what? Courage. Alice, Alice admires courage. Intransitive verbs don't require anything after, after the verbs. These are just possibilities of phrases in English in various sentences. Linguists call them intransitives. Now, intransitive verbs cannot be followed by any other phrase or any other word. For example, the verb smile is an intransitive verb. Alice smiled. Now we don't need a noun for smiled at what, smiled for whom. Alice, I mean, for example, you cannot use a noun like Alice smiled, Lucy. It won't make sense. 
अदर ग्रामेटिकल कैटेगरी वी आर लुकिंग एट पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच एडजेक्टिव क्या होता है यू नो एडजेक्टिव words again words which describe nouns but we will also look at adjective phrases and noun phrases but again adjectives will come between a determiner and a noun for example the happy man um adjective describing the quality of the noun will come before the noun after the determiner the construction will always be like that uh adjectives are understood as modifiers that show the properties of the noun the following noun adverbs kya hota hai adverbs also modify the verb they also show the information about the verb ab to use adverb we will have to use the construction determiner followed by a noun followed by a verb the man ran quickly how did he run quickly happily sadly they they laughed well so adverbs also modify uh, verbs then of course determiners we are talking of articles they precede come before nouns and they fit into the frames of right at the beginning followed by adjectives for optional adjectives because you can say the man or you you can say the tall man but determiners come right at the beginning of an english sentence conjunctions join these joiners those who conjoin in, for example and or and but and to use conjunctions you have to understand that that noun can be added to conjoined with another noun verb can be they walked and sang for example so conjunctions prepositions prepositions have meaning based properties uh, preposition you know in english language they say there are about 70 odd prepositions i tried to tried to find how many prepositions roughly speaking tibetan language uses because all languages will have some number roughly the same number probably uh, english they have 70 but out of 70 we don't use all we don't we common prepositions will be probably 40 or 30 now prepositions are words which give locations or paths way locations are are given by words like on in over under beside paths are given by words like to from through uh, down up now kindly look at the the sentence patterns as i have just begun after after dealing with parts of speech all of you can recognize these simple sentences the examples of the sentences are are on the right side but the there is a formula and each time we write these sentences we have to follow this pattern we have to follow this template we have to follow this order so order is very important huh? so for example you can write a sentence writing beginning with noun followed by a verb for example alice side you can add a determiner at front the rabbit of course the is the determiner so you have to write some of these patterns like determiner is followed by noun followed by verb and there are other possibilities like determiner followed by noun followed by verb followed by noun for example the rabbit saw alice determiner can take place in front of the second noun of course determiner will come not only only at the beginning of sentences but we are not basically talking of sentences but phrases so within a sentence uh this template determiner the the sentence is the girl saw the rabbit the is the determiner noun is the girl saw is the verb then again a determiner followed by a noun uh, what about determiner followed by adjective all these are possibilities syntactic possibilities the white rabbit left the is the determiner white is the adjective so it's a perfectly meaningful construction then the white rabbit saw alice you can have two nouns so you can have possibilities you can have generation of as many sentences but their word order will be important if you just change one of the words and its position into some other place it will stop making sense we have to understand that finally in the end you have determiner followed by noun verb determiner adjective noun this is just to show you that that uh, combinations of words in their right positions which we have just tried to understand that nouns and verbs will have their position after the noun 
always after the noun. I mean, all these templates, verb is always after the noun. Have you seen this, read this, so that I can move to the next? Why? Because we will need this. I, we are doing some exercises. You will need the sentence ka order. But these are simple ones. I think you have noticed it, right? Can I move on? Uh, after we do um, the, the words ka positions and the words ka orders, there is this concept linguists have talked about a lot. It's called IC analysis. I, it's an important one. Uh, its full form is immediate constituent analysis. Uh, we have to, of course, uh, describe this. Now, this concept was given by uh, Leonard Bloomfield, who, is a, who was a linguist, very popular linguist. But wh what, are, what are constituents? And why do we analyze constituents? Constituents are those units within sentences, those meaningful units. When they are in a certain position, they should make sense. For example, uh, noun is followed by a verb. Now, the verb will be a constituent. Just like we have just seen that all these are constituents. The whole sentence is also a constituent part. And you have, in, you have immediate. Immediate ka kya matlab hota? Immediate matlab, right at your hand. Huh? Something you can clearly see, the first thing that you notice. So when you, when you, understand, when you read a sentence, IC analysis is a technique that helps us to divide the parts and notice the positions, the word order. And hence, we understand the meaning of, of those sentences. Uh, so I'll come back to IC analysis. This was only to say that, that uh, constituents are important. So we have just looked at some sentences, their word orders, and with parts of speech. And before I go to constituents uh, in a bit of detail, uh, that word written you know, at, the, at the last, called tree diagram, will be, will be, my half of the lecture will be based on tree diagrams. So we can make a diagram of any sentence, long, short, phrase, and understand syntax, can understand the positions, can understand meanings of these various different combinations of words. So tree diagrams and IC analysis is what we are going to do today in some detail. I am going to talk about constituency. There is a concept in linguistics called constituency. Uh, constituent, as I have uh, just tried to mention, uh, is a unit. We will take an example of a sentence and try to understand what is a constituent. By the way, any word cannot be a constituent. That's what we are trying to understand. How can a constituent be a valid unit, a valid constituent. How do we know, by the way, any sentence you read, any sentence you write, how do we know that various parts should stay together or in different word order, different positions? I mean, constituents or constituency or IC analysis, analyzing these constituents helps us to understand that which parts come together. For example, the sentence, the tall boy goes to the church. How do I know that tall and the and boy comes, come together? And how do I know that after this noun phrase, the verb is allowed to come in English, according to the word order, like subject, verb, object? So we, we are going to look at sentences uh, in detail. Our sentences, you can all write it, the boys play at school. This is our example sentence. Huh? Now, any, we have taken an, a sentence. And in order to see the various units, how many units are there? P boys play can be a unit. At school can be a unit. The boys can be a unit. Only the, can it be a unit? Well, it, it won't make much sense. The boys make sense. At school tells you the location. Where are they? Okay. So, how do we know which constituents stick together, combine together? In order to understand, linguists give us a series of techniques we call constituency tests. I know it's, it's getting a little technical, but 
if you want to understand sentences on the level of syntax, sentences like this, the boys play at school, we have to understand the constituents, valid constituents, invalid constituents. So the tests I'm talking of, there are many methods, but I have brought four, four ways how we can look at a sentence. Uh, they, they are called substitution test, movement test, question and answer test, coordination test. So what do I mean by that? Uh, can I get the board, uh, the board here? Can you please bring it here? Uh, because it'll be difficult for them to. This is our first way to understand sentences, like the boy. Substitution means you replace a unit with another unit, and by replacing, if it still makes sense, then we can say it is a valid unit. For example, let's take this, I mean, just consider this as a unit or as a constituent. If, if I can replace this, well, this part, this unit, this constituent by another word, and still the sentence makes sense, then that, that unit will be a valid constituent. Can I, can I write this? I mean, I replace this part with a word, which is a pronoun, and the sentence still makes sense. The boys play at school, I play at school. Um, and if it still makes sense, then this is a valid constituent. Let us also take this unit as a constituent, another constituent. And if I suppose write the word there, and suppose you substitute, you substitute this unit with another, the boys play there, it is valid. It is meaningful, grammatical, syntactical, no problem. Uh, suppose I take play at school as a unit and try to substitute, try to replace it. Uh, linguists have a phrase like do so, it's a, it's a phrase they use for substitution. If it makes sense, the boy do so. Do what? Of course, we have to understand they are playing at school, they play at school. The boys do so. And then, if this makes sense, play at school is also a, also a valid constituent. So substitute, uh, substitution test replaces one unit with a word, with a phrase, and if it can be replaced, and if, if, if after re, re, uh, replacing it still makes sense or meaning, then your units are, I mean, you can do this with other languages as well. You, you replace that by imagining any other unit. Uh, it should make sense. And th this test shows that this sentence carries valid constituents. So this is one way of looking at constituents. Second test is, <coughs> Movement test, the, the sentence remains the same. You understand the meaning of the word movement. <coughs> movement means you try to take a unit, again a unit, and move it somewhere else and then see whether it makes sense. If it does, then this unit will be a valid constituent. Okay, so if you change it and you, you actually write at school, and then continue at school, the boys play. You, you moved it. I, I think it makes sense. Uh, it still makes sense. At school, the boys play, even though this is not the best way of, of writing the sentence, but grammatically it's correct. So we can say at school is a valid constituent, or it, it, it is a unit. If we move only this word school somewhere, like let, let me move this, and I write uh, school the boys play, play at. Does it make sense? I mean, uh, does it make grammatical sense? It is confusing, not very clear. School the boys play at. Maybe 40% sense, but not complete sense. We cannot say then that school is a valid unit or valid 
constituent. If I move boy's play as a unit, now why are we doing this? We are trying to understand individual phrases within any sentence, try to substitute with other, uh, other phrases, try to move them to different positions. And this will help us to understand which words combine logically and get into a word order. Okay, and there are other tests, of course. So if I, if I move boys play, kya bane of it? Boys play. The at school. It makes no sense. So boys play will not be a valid constituent in this case. If I go to Q and A test. Q and A, question and answer. So send the question and answer test. The boys play at school. Now we take a unit and try to answer a question. The question mostly these are WH questions like where, who, what, these are the questions. I mean we'll only take these. So the boys play where and the answer is a valid one, school. So this is a constituent. I mean constituent means that this is logically placed. Its position in the, in the word order of the sentence makes sense. Then uh, if, you, if you ask me, um, if you question who plays at school, the boys is a constituent, a valid constitu constituent. Uh, then of course, you have the boys do what? This unit answers, what are they doing? The boys play at school, of course. Play at school, the boys do what? They play at school. So play at school can also be considered as a constituent. <laughs> All right, so uh, if, if a unit is able to answer these questions, we call these units constituents. Now, why are we doing this again? That when we look at sentences in terms of tree diagrams, which is very important, we have to understand after we did uh, parts of speech, we are trying to understand what are constituents. Finally, you have one test remaining, which is called coordination test. Coordinate means join or help something. Coordination, coordination test. Same sentence. So of course, at school, if, if we take this unit as a prepositional phrase, preposition, prepositional phrase, coordination will also be understood as conjunctions. Can we add coordinate another preposition and it still makes sense? If this sentence still makes sense, then, it, then this unit will be a valid construction. So the boys play at school. Uh, and at, co at college, for example. The, the boys play at school and at college. Makes sense. Or the boys play at school. If you take this unit now, the boys play at school and write in, write at home, for example. I mean, any sentences which you can add individual units with and the, the sentence still makes sense, this allows us to understand that syntactically speaking, all these words are in the right positions, combined in a, in a logical syntactic way. And we, we can understand that these words, these phrases, these units are valid constituents. Sometimes they are not. I, I want you to practice and by, by using these four uh, tests for this sentence. First you write the sentence, and then just imagine imagination or, or just try to write it. Uh, sentences, the blue key opens the door to the hall. 
So can you substitute some unit uh, in this in this sentence? The blue key ko, can you write it opens? Yes. You can. But can you say Sentences will become longer as we go forward. Now, the blue key can be substituted with it. So, this is a unit. But if I say, if I say the door is a unit and can I replace it by it? I, I'll just try to, I mean, opens it. The blue key opens it. And the rest of the sentence will also be added. The blue key opens it to the hall. We don't know opens what. And so the door will not be a valid constituent. Uh, I'll try to try to now look at movement test with this, this phrase. So for example, to the hall is a unit. Can I take it at the front? To the hall, the blue key opens the door. It will somehow it makes sense. So to the hall is, I mean, syntactically, in its word order, it makes sense. What about uh, the hall? Only the hall. Can I move it at front? The hall, the, the hall, the blue key opens the door. It doesn't make sense. So the hall, apne apne, individually, it's not a constituent, not a valid unit. To the hall is. To the hall is a prepositional phrase. Those may preposition have a noun phrase have. We will be talking of, of all those things very soon. Uh, so the hall, the blue key opens, will not make sense. Uh, finally, I mean, if, if we can have a question and answer test with this sentence, uh, opens the door to what? To the hall, makes sense. Uh, what, what opens? I mean, this, this is, of course, we have already seen this is a uh, valid construction in uh, according to other tests. But what opens the door to the hall? The blue key opens the door to the hall. It opens the door to the hall. So these constituents, these units, are valid constituents. So coordination test, similarly, we can also apply on. I mean, any, any other sentence, you should sometimes work by replacing, by substituting, by question answer, by moving the phrases. If they don't make sense, they are not valid constituents. And on the basis of validity of constituents, uh, we have been doing IC analysis. <clears throat> now we go to what we call tree diagrams. I hope this will be interesting. Uh, tree diagrams. Every sentence has to be looked at as a diagram on the basis of your knowledge of parts of speech, your knowledge of abhi tak jo bhi hua hai, abhi tak kya hua hai? Ki you have revised the parts of speech, you have tried to understand ki syntax mein word order, positions, combinations must be valid, must be constituent analysis. Huh? So tree, tree diagram is a technique linguists use. You can do it in Tibetan, you can do it in all the languages. We make diagrams of sentences, which helps us to understand their phrases, their constructions. Uh, we, would, we would look at a phrase like, the children put the toys in the box. But before we do it, uh, we can actually divide the, the units into the children. In the red brackets, you have the uh, verb phrase. We call it, the whole phrase is called verb phrase because it begins with a verb and then follows by another noun phrase within it preposition phrase within it. Can you see that the red brackets show? Put the toys in the box. Now this is a verb phrase, not just a verb, but the verb controls the rest of the phrase. Like in, in order to make it a verb phrase, you will need another determiner, another noun, another preposition, another determiner, another noun, the constructions I was showing earlier. So we can divide sentences like this, but 
three diagrams. I mean, of course, you have put the toys in the box. Um, this is just to, before we are going to tree diagrams, uh, we are looking at a sent, we, we, we need some of these keywords. S means sentence. Sentence is a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. Verb phrase will not come before the noun phrase. Now, what is a noun phrase? We are looking at phrases now. The noun phrase can have an optional determiner, that's why it is in brackets, can have an adjective phrase, can have a noun, noun is, why noun is in, not in brackets? Because it is your head word. Noun phrase cannot be without a noun. So noun is a must. And then it will have optional determiners, just the man, then adjective phrase, the tall man, in the room, prepositional phrase. PP means prepositional phrase. Then you have verb phrases, which may have an auxiliary, will come. Now, will is an auxiliary. Then will be, will, will be followed with the main verb. The, the head word of that phrase, verb, and it can be followed by a noun phrase. Then prepositional phrase have a degree sometimes, and then followed by preposition, which will be followed by the noun phrase. For example, deep in the box. The degree shows you how, where is it, quite deep. In is your preposition, the box, another noun phrase. So what am I doing is, I am looking at sentences by dividing them into certain parts. This comes to be something important, interesting. I, you have to imagine sentences in terms of a tree which is upside down. All right? So imagine you have a tree with, uh, at the top, you have the sentence. I mean, the whole sentence, the root. But at the bottom, you have individual words. You have phrases. So you have words. You have syntactic categories. What were these syntactic categories? Noun, determiner, verb, phrase, preposition, adjective. These are the syntactic units. Then you have, when you join these nouns and verbs, they become phrases. Of course, phrases, and it ultimately becomes a sentence. So tree diagrams are, you have a sentence which can be divided into individual units. That helps us to understand the, the syntax, the combinations of words, the order of words, location of words, meaning of these words and phrases. All right, I have taken all of this from a book called Contemporary Linguistics by William O'Grady you know, from these pages. Uh, let's look at some phrases now. For example, our, our example phrase, first phrase, which we will look at as a tree is, what is the phrase? Play with the toy. Now this is, mind you, this is not a sentence. The difference between phrase and a sentence. Play with a toy, what is the first word here? Which syntactic category is it? Which part of speech is it? First word. It's a verb. Now, when you have a verb at the beginning, does not have a noun before it, it means you are looking at a verb phrase, not a noun phrase. Now, within a verb phrase, after the verb, you will have a prepositional phrase, noun phrase, determiner, and a noun. But there is a way, there is a method of making tree diagrams. And I'm going to make you practice, uh, because otherwise you are not going to understand syntax. So how do we do it? First of all, you write the sentence at the bottom of your page. How? So for example, this is verb phrase. First of all, you'll write play with the toy somewhere Nietzsche. Because these are our individual words. I will try to explain it as, as closely as possible. Can you all write this? Play with the toy. These are our individual words. We are not looking at the sentence. We are not looking at the phrase. That's why uh, we, have we have put space between them. Play with the toy. Now, within this construction, you have, of course, this is the verb phrase as it is written. But within the verb phrase, you have a noun phrase. Can you tell me what is a noun phrase within the verb phrase? The whole thing is a verb phrase. Abhi humne piche kiya tha, noun phrase is equal to determiner followed by a noun. Can you tell me, anyone, which is the noun phrase within this verb phrase? So many of you are saying toy. Toy is the main noun. To make it a phrase, you will need a determiner. So the toy is the noun phrase. What is with? Preposition? Preposition. So preposition 
to make a preposition into prepositional phrase, you need a preposition followed by determiner followed by a noun. Now, all of these are parts within parts of the verb phrase that we are looking at. How do we write it? We will under we will see our main words and we will make this is our first diagram in this word. Now, these words were very clear to us. Hence, I started with toy, which is a noun. The is the determiner. Is it clear? But if you combine them, ye phrase, this is a phrase, the toy. We can call it noun phrase. You should also write sometimes, and then, of course, we will do practice with. Ye to hoga noun phrase, determiner and noun. Then you have preposition, which is with. And prepositional phrase kya hoga? Prepositional phrase hoga having a preposition followed by a noun phrase. That's why. In the diagram, you write preposition to see that you have with, but the rest of the sentence is also part of prepositional phrase. You have one preposition which is with, but rest of it it is also called prepositional phrase. Ab hamare pas kya reh gaya? Only one word, which is which is the verb, but we will call it verb phrase because the verb play is followed by other phrases. So it looks like this ultimately. This is the verb. But ultimately, uh, we have a we have a phrase called verb phrase can be divided into main verb, prepositional phrase, then prepositional phrase further divided into main preposition, noun phrase, and noun phrase can be further divided into determiner, noun, and we will apply this method to all the sentences we are going to do today. Let's take another. I mean, there are some some examples for for uh, practice. Uh, we will took now these are again phrases repair the telephone is a which phrase verb phrase, verb phrase. the success of the program is it a verb phrase noun. looks like a noun phrase success is a is a idea is a noun a film about pollution noun. just guess normally guess it it's a noun phrase move towards the window so because it opens with a verb the end of the road Anyway, let's take repair the telephone. Huh? We we are doing slowly, but these tree diagrams are extremely important. I mean, they help us understand the inner combinations and meanings of sentences. Let's first take repair the telephone. Now, our main words are repair, which is a repair is the verb. Telephone is the noun, but the is a determiner, an article. So, हम फिर वैसे ही लिखेंगे. We will we'll just underline repair and telephone. Then we will say this is the preposition. But be, be after the preposition, you have a noun. We will call it PP, prepositional phrase. And isko hum likh denge VP, verb phrase, which has a prepositional. So first you write you have verb, determiner, noun. This is your noun phrase. Uh, no, there is no preposition. Sorry, we have a noun phrase with a determiner and a noun. And verb phrase carries that noun phrase. Simple. The success of the program. Uh, success is the noun. O what is off the program? Off the program will be not a preposition but a phrase. I mean, preposition to sirf one word hoga, but off the program will be the prepositional phrase. So first we just underline and give them there. Uh, you, you should write this because. There, there are exercises we'll be doing with some longer words, uh, sentences. The is there. We have two determiners, two nouns, but the last one, the program, is the noun phrase. Of the program is the prepositional phrase. The success is another noun phrase, and the success have, has a part within it as the prepositional phrase. So he, here is your noun phrase. Here is your prepositional phrase of the program. So you have to make branches. If you want to, if you have to divide your your sentences and phrases into individual words, हमे exactly पता होना चाहिए कौन सा word क्या है and which part does it belong to. Now you can clearly see of the program will be a constituent. It may it will make sense. Uh, so now you have. 
basically this was a noun phrase, consa, the success of program, but you have to make a diagram like this in order to understand the combinations and they must make sense. A film about pollution, aap khud karo isko. This is a, so first of all, a, uh, the first word is determiner, please write film is pollution, another noun and about preposition, good. So about pollution is your phrase, not a word. About pollution is, is what, what is it? Yeah, but let's use the correct words, prepositional phrase. A film is your noun phrase. So a film about pollution is a noun phrase having a prepositional phrase. This is how we, we will make our, uh, so pollution is your noun phrase, about pollution is your prepositional phrase, and a film is your no main noun phrase having these determiners. Verb phrase. So if you write now, verb followed by, what is two words? Well, is it, is it what, noun? You move towards, it looks like maybe it's prepositional phrase or maybe it's an adverbial phrase, ki move kaise? But well, I think it will be a prepositional phrase. Let's look at it, towards is the preposition, move is the verb, and now you you know the window is a phrase. Consa phrase, the window. Noun phrase. Noun phrase. Towards the window is? Okay, good. And the, the entire construction is your verb phrase. Noun phrase, prepositional phrase, verb phrase. But you, you try to learn, please, to make these roots. And uh, we will be doing sentences, not only uh, uh, phrases. Right now, we are only looking at parts of sentences, phrases. Ye karo fatafat, the end of the road. What kind of phrase is it? It's not a sentence. It is a phrase. <laughs> so what is end? Road is your noun. The road is your noun phrase. Off the road is your prepositional phrase. The end should be the noun phrase and start making these tree diagrams. We call them tree diagrams. They are immensely helpful to, to you know, I mean, suppose you, you write a non-grammatical sentence, suppose. You cannot make a tree diagram like this. That will show you that the combination, the positions of the words are, the syntax is wrong. I mean, if I, if I try to apply tree diagram to a Tibetan sentence, to wo uska mujhe combinations, uska mujhe grammar, word order, meaningful meaningful banna chahiye, otherwise immediately I will understand that the, the sentence is ungrammatical, the sentence is not syntactical. Now let's move to another sort of, a, uh, now we are moving at uh, sentence tree. Pahle hum kare the phrase, phrases, now we are looking at complete sentences. Sentence like, he likes the toy. Isko bhi kaise karoge, you will write at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom of your page. Now, Clearly, you have now he as the pronoun or the, the noun and likes se shuru ho gaya aapka verb, we can divide it. So, pehle to alag alag karke likho, he likes the toy. Then you assign their individual constituents ya grammatical categories. See, the toy is your, toy is the noun, the is the determiner, this is your noun phrase. Likes the toy verb phrase, you know, you have to write it like this. And of course, he likes the toy is your noun phrase. Noun, pronoun, pronoun is simply used in place of the noun. And now you will write the word S because now you have, you have looked into, into the complete sentence. So, likhne ka tarika yehi hai. This is the root of the tree, S, the sentence, can be divided into a noun phrase can be divided into a verb phrase, but verb phrase will have another noun phrase like that. The children like, like the toy. So the children is the noun phrase, like the toy is the verb phrase. Simple, yes, simple, hai, but we are going to look at some others as well. The children, 
uh, put the toy in the box. I mean, they have taken a different, different. Uh, now the sentence has become big, a bit longer. The children put the toy in the box. In the box, put the toy, put the toy in the box. Verb phrase, in the box. Prepositional phrase, the children is, is the noun phrase. Okay. The box is the noun phrase. In the box is the preposition phrase. The toy, another noun phrase. Put the toy in the box. This will be the complete verb phrase. And we are slowly moving towards the, the sentence. Sentence may you will have noun phrase, then divided with a verb phrase. Ab upar s likhna mat bhulna. So this is how we make tree diagrams of any sentence that you take. But the sentence, sentence has to have the word order, the combinations, right? So, I mean, if you're, of course, uh, now our sentences are getting longer. Soon I'm going to give you some sentences. You have to, like, this should not be very difficult. Just make a tree diagram of some sentences. Draw the tree structure of any sentence of your choice. These are sentences, not phrases. Koi bhi choose karlo and just make a tree diagram. So whatever we have done so far, you should be able to ha make a tree diagram of, of all these sentences. Iske baad maybe we'll do some maybe difficult ones. Is, is the first one slightly tricky? Those guests should leave. What kind of phrase do you think is, is it? Those guests should leave. Why do you say it is a noun phrase? Phrase Because the first word is determiner. determiner, yes. So determiners are not just articles. They can also be words like that, this, these, those. Yes, it's a determiner. Guests is your noun. So you have a noun phrase. Should leave, of course, is part of the noun phrase, oh. which is the verb phrase. What is should? It's a, uh, some of you are saying mo modal. Auxiliary, auxiliary, modal auxiliary, same thing, uh, form of a verb. Maria never ate a brownie. Now this, this is slightly different. Ate, ate a brownie is your verb phrase. Never, what is never? De determiner? No. So she ate the brownie, she never ate the brownie. So this word gives us some information about the verb. Ke khaya lekin kabhi nahi khaya, never ate the brownie. It's an adverb. So now you, you see noun phrases can also have adverb phrases, followed by verb phrases, followed by noun phrase. A brownie is a noun phrase. So to kindly look at sentences in all these ways. For we, very quickly we look at those guests should leave. Determiner noun, auxiliary verb, verb phrase, should leave, noun phrase, this is your sentence. Okay, simple. Maria never ate a brownie. Never is the adverb. It tells us about the verb. What is the verb? Ate. Ate. But the word never tells us about, about the, the occasion of eating. Never, never ate. So now, of course, you write determiner and noun, ho jayega, noun phrase, ye ho jayega, verb phrase. Kyu? Because adverb is also part of the, of the verb. And Maria is, will be the noun phrase. And in this case, only one word will be the, the noun, the head, the main verb, sorry, the main word, the main noun. The shelf will fall. This should be simple. Nee, sorry, that shelf will fall. Noun phrase, but, but you should be able to explain how is it a noun phrase. The, the, the main noun is shelf, but it is determined with by a word called that. Ki kaun sa shelf? Huh? 
that shelf is your noun phrase, will fall is your verb phrase, will is the auxiliary, fall is the main verb. Okay, verb phrase, noun phrase, this is your sentence. The glass broke. This is maybe the easiest. What, which fra phrase is this? So, abhi samaj mein nahi but but this is an important exercise. I mean, looking at phrases as well as sentences in terms of its, you know, you are developing your understanding of the positions of subject, verb, object, also trying to understand how words are combined. And agar wo test karna hai ki kya ye valid unit hai nahi hai. So then for that we have constituent tests, which we can do in some detail some other time, maybe after this introductory series. So the is the determiner, glass is the noun, verb phrase, noun phrase, sentence. The student lost the debate. Clear hai ki nahi hai? Is it a verb phrase? Is it a verb phrase? It's a noun phrase. The manager may offer a raise. May is, again, modal auxiliary, which, which helps the main verb. Main verb is offer. A raise, a raise is a phrase. Which phrase? A raise. Is, is that difficult? Raise is, is well, raise, normally we, we say raise is a verb, to raise, but when you get increase in your pay, that is also a noun, a, a raise in the pay, a noun. A raise means, um, you know, like more income, for example, as zada cheese, noun. So determiner, auxiliary, nouns, noun phrase, verb phrase, another noun phrase, then the sentence. <coughs> so if you are interested in homework, these are phrases, not sentences. Uh, I'm going to like skip a few. Abhi zada ni karunga repair the telephone. These are simple ones. Uh, I'm going to skip. Um, then there are some phrases which are which can be slightly ambiguous. J for example, Jane hid the letter from Dan. Now this looks complex. First of all, from Dan is your prepositional phrase. The letter is your noun phrase. Hid the letter from Dan is the verb phrase. Because the sentence begins with the main head noun, it's a noun phrase, having verb phrases, another noun phrase, prepositional phrase, etc. So the meaning, meaning of the sentence is, Jane didn't want Dan to see the letter. D read the sentence again. Jane hid the letter from Dan. I mean, if you think this is the only meaning of the sentence, just wait. Jane didn't want Dan to see the letter. Is wale meaning ka tree diagram ye hoga. Same sentence can have a different meaning. See, isme kya tha? You have the letter as the noun phrase. Of course, again you have the letter as the noun phrase, but another meaning of the of the sentence is Jane hid the letter that Dan wrote. Kaise? Jane hid the letter from Dan. Matlab, usne jo likha tha, wo usi se chupaya. That is also a meaning of the sentence. Pichle wala ka kya tha? Jane, Jane didn't want Dan to see the letter. He did not write the letter, but some letter hidden from, trying to hide from Dan. Isme, Jane hid the letter that ra Dan wrote. Uh, Otherwise, the structure remains the same. Some, some sentences may have meanings which are ambiguous. I mean, that happens because of conjunctions, because of positions, which uh, may confuse sometimes. It may, may mean ambiguous meanings, but uska structure thoda sa change hoga. What is the big change in this? You have the verb phrase, wohi to hai. I mean, what is the, within the verb phrase you have, it's only the positions that are that are changed. Otherwise, it's the same structure. Just the tree diagram looks like a bit different. Now, whenever you have sentences with conjunctions, they also uh, produce some ambiguity. He likes raw vegetables and meat. Iska ek matlab ho sakta hai, he likes raw vegetables and raw meat. Dusra matlab ho sakta hai, he likes raw vegetables 
and separately some meat. Now these two meanings can, can be understood by the sentence. He likes raw vegetables and raw meat. Like this is one meaning of the sentence. Uska structure ye hoga. And ek aur sentence ho sakta hai. He likes raw vegetables and just different meat. Otherwise the tree diagram will be the same. And of course we will have other sentences. I, I will not go into the detail. Uh, take the second sentence, write it and spend two minutes by trying to write the tree diagram. Second sentence is, he put the car into the garage. He put the car into the garage. Uh, is it a verb phrase, noun phrase? What do you say? But then these are, okay, he put, he put the uh, car into the garage. Should be noun phrase. Huh? See, he put the car into the garage. The sentence, first of all, divides it. You have a noun in the form of pronoun as he, then you have the verb phrase. Within the verb phrase, you have noun phrase, preposition phrase. Uh, so, jitna bhi lamba sentence likhoge, it will have mainly a sentence is a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. I mean, mainly it is that. But then the, the various combinations, the various other words you will bring in will decide whether verb phrase ke under prepositional phrase hai, adverb phrase hai, or bhi noun phrases hai. Uh, that, that is like just combining various units to as, ma as much length as you possibly can. Bas wo syntax theek hona chahiye, meaning clear hona chahiye. Okay, uh, other practice we can maybe do sometime. Uh, this one looks interesting, the second one. My cat is very sick. Uh, which, what kind of phrase is this? My is? The noun, but of course it's pronoun. Huh? My cat is the main head noun, but this is the, the noun phrase, my cat. Is very sick is the? Yeah, but no, auxiliary verb to is hai. Is very sick is the verb phrase. Uh, very sick, what kind of word is very? Okay, so the sentence having my cat as noun phrase is very sick, the verb phrase. Very sick is the adjective phrase. This is a new phrase we are doing, right? So sick is adjective and very sick is another, no, sorry, very sick is the adverb behaving like adjective. So the phrase will be, uh, no, like the, the adverb very is associated with the verb is. That is our main verb here uh, in this sentence. So, my cat is very hai. What is kya hai? Sick is the adjective. So, it's a strange construction in which you have an adjective phrase having an adjective and an adverb. This is also possible. Tree diagrams. One last one maybe and then we move ahead with some other things. My sister is singing in the festival. Maybe the spellings are, are not correct here. Huh? Uh, so, singing is the verb, is is the auxiliary, my sister is the noun phrase, the festival is the noun phrase, in the festival is the, in the festival, prepositional phrase. So what is the verb phrase in this sentence? What is the verb phrase in the sentence? Is sing is, only in singing, nahin. is singing in the festival is the verb phrase. Sara, or uske under you have parts, parts like prepositional phrase, then noun phrase. I think we have done enough of this. And um, I'm just left with something called adjuncts. Um, 
that is also an important part of syntax. Now, when you write sentences, there are some units which are optional, which you may delete or keep on adding. They are not the main part of the, of the sentence. So all phrases which are optional or extra information are called adjuncts. within our syntactic constructions. So, agar mein kahun ki read the sentence called, I bought a book yesterday. Can you think and tell me which information, which part of the sentence is adjunct? Because if you say yesterday, then you, by after deleting it, the sentence should still be meaningful. I bought a book. It, it is. It is. So that unit, that ab isko hum kya sakte hain? Constituent hai, lekin adjunct hai. Uh, adjunct ka matlab hi wohi hota hai, some attachment which is, which is optional. The sentence still holds. Now adjuncts can be of some types. Uh, again, sentence, adjunct structure is, is also important kyunki optional sentences. If some unit can be eliminated from the sentence, we call it adjunct. Look at this sentence, the man on the couch wore blue. What do you think is the adjunct? Adjunct is a, again a phrase, but which is added extra information. On the couch. Because if you el eliminate it, if you delete it, the sentence should still be a valid one. So if you, if you, if you delete wore blue, by chance you delete word blue. Do you think the, sen the sentence we are left with is grammatical, meaningful, syntactical? The man on the couch. I mean, if you delete, for, for a moment, if you delete word blue, the man on the couch, well, it, you, you can understand there is a man on the couch, but it is not a valid sentence. Why? Because the, there is no verb in, in man on the couch. In order, to have a, in order to have a clause, in order to have a subject followed by a verb, wo verb hona chahiye, huh? So the man on the couch is, is ap, apne aap mein it is not a meaningful construction. I mean, the verb is missing. So, so war blue looks like an important unit. But if you delete on the couch, this is the adjunct. The man wore blue. The man on the couch wore blue. And you can keep on adding other, other adjuncts. The man on the couch smiling broadly wore blue. Take it. The man on the couch sleeping fast wore blue. Something like that. These are adjuncts. Optional information. Now, adjuncts can also be understood as, usually as adverbs. So, ye mostly verbs ke aspas mein. Hota hai. Jaise for example, wore blue ke paas mein hi tha on the couch. So they are mostly adverbial phrases, adjuncts, which are used to, to give additional information for the verb, who modify the verb. Now adjuncts, if they, are, if they behave like adverbs, they indicate, sometimes they indicate time, some manner of action, manner of the verb, place, Frequency degree. We'll just try to see few of these adjuncts of time. So in some sentences, if you write a sentence like the alarm went off, it just went off by the way. The alarm went off again yesterday. Is my adjunct of time kya hai? Yesterday. Yesterday. But and if you delete it, eliminate it, the, the alarm went off again. Makes sense. What is the verb here? went off. Now, can you make a tree diagram of this? The alarm went off again. Uh, went off again is? Went off again. Verb phrase. Verb phrase. Verb phrase. Huh. And off again, off is your adverb. Ki wo, the alarm went, but kaise? It went off. Jaise very tha. Again is another adverb. And if you just delete the, the, the adjunct yesterday, adjunct of time, the alarm is the noun phrase, and the, 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 phrase, the phrase can be made a tree, tree diagram of. Another uh, example of adjunct, time adjunct. In the morning, he will eat an apple. So, the, the adjunct of time, which you can eliminate, 
is which phrase? No, I mean, in this sentence, what can, is there any extra information which you can delete and the sentence will still make sense? In the morning is the adjunct. And it is the time adjunct. Because rest of the sentence will, will be, he will eat an apple. And anyway, if you start the sentence in the morning and don't delete it, so it, it, is, it is neither a noun phrase in the morning. In the morning is basically a prepositional phrase. So prepositional phrase ke pehle bhi koi phrase hona chahiye, then only it will be a complete construction. And it's just an optional thing. He, in, in the morning, he will eat an apple, or he will eat an apple in the morning. You can, you can delete it either way. Another uh, adjunct is adjunct of manner. Let's look at the sentences. Present your case carefully. Manner matlab, the way you do it, kaise. Present your case carefully. What do you think is the adjunct? Carefully. carefully. Okay, present your case. Sammy drinks his cola like a demon. He drinks, but kaise? Sammy is the noun phrase. Drinks his cola uh, like a demon is a verb phrase. But adjuncts are these additional extra constructions. In all languages, we use it. And basically, you can make a string of series of as many adjuncts. But, but we have to remember that they are optional. They are not part of the, the sent. They are not part of the, they are not validly part of the combination of the words for the syntax. Syntax ka part to hai, lekin wo additional extra part hai. Sammy drinks his cola is perfectly valid. So, kuch, kuch adjuncts hote hai, place ke. Place adjuncts. Matlab, they tell us, some words tell us, where is the action going to take place? Here, the situation is completely different. Here is your adjunct of place. Then you have frequency. So, these are basically adverbs, ki jo verb ho raha hai, wo kaise ho raha hai, but they are just extra. We just have a word for it, adjuncts. Basically, while writing sentences and studying the structure of sentences, adjuncts have to be understood very clearly. They are not part of the, the, the main clause, subject verb. They are not part of the main sentence. They are additional information. She comes here often. Give me the adjunct. She comes here. Makes sense? She comes here. Finally, of course, uh, moving towards the end of the lecture, I have to talk about verbs, especially verbs uh, are understood ha as having some arguments. Verbs like give, ver verbs like make, walk, dance, different verbs behave differently. And how do we understand it? That verbs have a, every verb has a content. Uska ek meaning hota hai. And when we use that verb in a sentence, us wo arguments leta hai. Ab how to explain that? I will have to use an example. For example, we take the verb give. Can we take it? Whenever, use, whenever we use the verb give in a sentence, it will always have three arguments. Arguments ka matlab, three possible places which will demand another word to make the construction logical, syntactical, meaningful. For example, this sentence, dash gave dash to something. Ye teen positions the verb give demands to fill. So, for example, you, you write, I gave it to him. So, you have noun, 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 pronoun, pronoun in different positions. The, the verb, we can then say the verb give has three arguments, yeah, three demands. But every verb will not have three, every verb will not have one. Let us look at some verbs, verbs like, so we can say that the verb give has three arguments. I've just said this. Let us look at the word see. Uh, <clears throat> you will understand what I'm saying, but just look at the verb see for a moment. Dash, saw, dash. We, the third argument is not required. Like give me tha, kisi ne diya, kya diya, kisko diya. There are three arguments. Kisi ne dekha kisi ko. Two arguments, two, two demands, two possibilities of 
the verb give. So we can say that, that so verbs in all languages demand arguments or themes or reasons which need to be supported, which need to be supplied. So she saw it. Now you can add some adjuncts on Thursday with my friend. She saw it on Thursday with my friend. They are, they are not part of the, the demands of the arguments of that verb. Uh, they are just adjuncts. She saw it. C in this case has two arguments. We also call these, these cases as thematic rules. Like कोई भी word है, अगर वो verb है, उसके उसके thematic rules हैं. Like give के तीन हैं, C के दो हैं, make another word we will see very soon. <coughs> so वो कौन से? You see, you can fill, you can actually understand uh, this. The verb give is given. Some some giver gives. ठीक है? And what is given is also given by the giver. वो दूसरी position है. And then kya diya hai? To give. So the giver, the given, sorry, yaha pe hona chahiye tha. Givey. Like kis ko diya hai? Givey is not a word, but I'm just trying to make sense ki dene wala diya kya? Kis ko diya? The word give will always demand these three thematic roles arguments this is important so we can write it the, the verb give has three roles these three roles are the thematic thematic roles let's let's quickly look at a, a verb like make make cannot have three arguments because something makes something you know this is done by something is made dash make dash so in this kind of a construction there is a maker who makes and what he makes it's what is made ठीक है वो वो तीसरा पॉसिबिलिटी यहाँ पे नहीं होगा। Similarly, see will have a seer. Seer का क्या मतलब? जो like I see. Seer seer कौन है? देखने वाला कौन है? फिर देखा क्या? The scene. So verbs will have these. This is an important chapter in in syntax. That's why I have to deal with it. And आगे चलके if we are going to do semantics, the meanings of sentences and pragmatics. So for that we will require adjuncts at some time as well. To before I finish, I have just made this category. Ki, see, the, in the middle you have the three verbs we have chosen: make, see, give. Now in different with different verbs the arguments will be different. So see ke liye a seer is needed and the scene is needed. Make ke liye maker is needed, made is needed. But give ke liye you have you need a giver, you need a given, and you need a givey. Kisko diya hai? It should be written uh, with an with an e. All right. So uh, this more or less brings to a close to today's class. What was it about? I have differentiated clauses and phrases. I have talked about so far. So far I have talked about words. Beyond the morphology, when they start combining, they they are treated as, as valid constituents. Now these constituents, pata kaise chalta hai our constituents by substituting them with other phrases, by replacing the position, by moving them, by asking questions from these units. Ki kya wo kya kar kya raha hai? Kisne kiya hai? Kyun kiya hai? Kahan kiya hai? And the final uh, thing was that some words can be coordinated, added with conjunctions. If the meaning still remains the same, uh, the, the sentence is valid. Ek toh humne constituent dekhe. Fir humne dekha, I mean, uske pehle we revised the phrases, uh, the grammatical categories of sentences. Fir finally we looked at a method we call tree diagrams, ki a sentence must be divided into individual words. Her ek sim single word, even the word a, uh, the, it, it is a pronoun. So we have looked at certain sentences and divided. Basically, why did we divide all these words into various parts? In order to understand the combinations. Ki agar, suppose there is a main verb. For example, give. This main verb may or may not have an adverb in the sentence. It may have an auxiliary. But if the verb is phrased, the rest of the sentence, whatever you have given, it will give someone. Now, someone will decide 
through a preposition aise diya ya a noun phrase kisko diya so a sentence can be divided into various parts constituents in order to understand these positions word order and we are looking at svo english ka word order uh can we distribute the little uh, this uh, page uh, there is one one little exercise that that you may do based on today's class it's not really uh, concerned with tree diagrams but rest of what we have done so it's a simple quiz uh, questions like what is a noun phrase you know and there are some sentences do read the sentence find where is the whatever the question says i am also going to display it this test was for 5 minutes i mean are you over uh, have you read all the questions okay so what is syntax syntax is a study of what do you think word formation anyone else who thinks it's a it's how you how language is used to communicate with situational context linguistic meaning this will help us to understand syntax once again so all of those who are saying it's word formation please listen to this word formation was the previous lesson in which you form words morphologically clear very clear so because syntax is about sentences and phrase word formation ka thodi hai ye one thing now linguistic meaning ka kya matlab hai ki any word carries a meaning in language but meaning is no, again not the domain of syntax not directly syntax is more like grammar syntax is the arrangement of the words meaning baad mein aayega but mainly syntax is the study of well how language is used to communicate well no how words are arranged how phrases clauses and sentences study of phrases clauses and sentences this is syntax now the second one of course uh, is on the on the sheet because uh, we have to understand that noam chomsky is uh, considered to be um, and he is still alive by the way quite old he is considered many say father of modern uh, modern linguistics ka father to saucer hai but then he is considered another one the next sentence should be easy in the sentence the fat man ate food which part is the noun phrase is it clear these are simple constituents ate food is verb phrase, verb phrase. What, what is ate so I, i just i don't want to hear verb phrase and man is not a noun phrase it's just a noun and just a verb the fat man is the noun phrase and in the sentence the fat man ate which part is a verb of course this is the easy which of the following is not a determiner so by doing syntax you are also revising your uh, parts of speech this there those all of these are determiners they determine something about the noun tall is the quality uh, describing the noun that is something different np plus vp matlab noun phrase plus verb phrase se kya banega preposition phrase never ha huh? clause or sentence uh, because i mentioned that a phrase will not have a noun phrase or verb phrase but a uh, clause has a complete construction sentence also so ye fourth wala kya hai determiner adverb phrase now no this is not in the scene open class or content words Con wo thematic wala jo main baat kar raha tha ki content words are carrying themes or meaning the words that convey conceptual meanings are called 
कॉन्टेंट वर्ड्स जैसे पोएम का कॉन्टेंट होता है सेंटेंस का कॉन्टेंट होता है वॉट इज नॉट एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट वर्ड सो कॉन्टेंट वर्ड इज दैट विच कैरी सम मीनिंग प्रो नाउन इज अ रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ अ नाउन नाउन हैज अ मीनिंग वर्ब हैज अ मीनिंग एडवर्ब ऑल्सो इज मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ब लेकिन प्रो नाउन अपने आप में कोई मीनिंग नहीं है वो सिर्फ रिप्लेस कर रहा है नाउन को फाइनली वॉट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट हेड इन वर्ड और हेड इन द नाउन फ्रेज नाउन ठीक है सो दिस क्लास कम्स टू एन एंड विद 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 एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट सिंटेक्स लर्निंग अबाउट सिंटेक्स इन्वॉल्व फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल योर नॉलेज ऑफ parts of speech you must be aware of noun hai kya verb hai kya then you have understood that with individual nouns and verbs phrases can be made noun phrase verb phrase prepositional phrase then you have seen positions constituents through certain tests ki noun phrase comes at the beginning followed by a verb phrase but since it is a phrase a verb phrase may still have nouns prepositions further nouns determiners कॉम्बिनेशंस लेकिन सारे वर्ड ऑर्डर हम याद रखेंगे और क्या किया आपने आई सी एनालिसिस लाइक कंस्टिट्यूएंट्स वॉट एल्स एडजंक्ट वाई आर एडजंक्ट्स इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज बिकॉज जब शुरू में मैंने बोला था इन लिंग्विस्टिक्स सिंटेक्टिकली द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी आर इमेंस इन फाइनाइट तो वी हैव टू रिमेंबर विद दो इन फाइनाइट पॉसिबिलिटीज द मेन head the main phrase is not everything in the sentence there are optional there are additional there are adjunct phrases words which can be deleted and yet the sentence retains its meaning so that was another point and then three diagrams you if you can learn to divide uh, sentences phrases into individual divisions of of phrases and their positions क्योंकि अब आपने जान लिया कि सेंटेंस वो हो ही नहीं सकता जिसमें एट दी आइसक्रीम ये सेंटेंस हो ही नहीं सकता बिकॉज इंग्लिश में डजन वर्क लाइक दैट इंग्लिश में ही एट दी आइसक्रीम ही वैलिड कंस्ट्रक्शन होगा सो विद ऑल ऑफ दिस वी ब्रिंग इट टू अ क्लोज एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स बेस्ड ऑन दीज द नेक्स्ट क्लास विल बी अबाउट सम मूवमेंट ऑफ द नाउन फ्रेज डब्ल्यू एच मूवमेंट सम अदर अदर इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज एंड देन वी विल ब्रिंग इट टू अ क्लोज विद डिस्कशन ऑफ semantics so from the very first class if you see four main areas we were looking at sounds words today we have looked at sentences phrases clauses parts of speech combinations etc the next thing will be when i come next week will be meanings which is called semantics thank you tubchi ji